Hey, good morning, Clay Center Christian Church. Uh, it's great to be worshiping with you online uh, once again this morning. Uh, it's a really interesting thing that's going on right now. While you're at home uh, reading God's Word along with us, uh, hearing uh, some some hopefully good teaching, um, and praying with us and uh, worshiping God uh, in your home, uh, we're also going to be doing it here in the building tomorrow morning, and uh, it's just an interesting thing how how that's going to be uh, taking place in both instances. And uh, we know that God uh, is is present, and uh, He's going to honor uh, those things this morning as long as they're from the heart and sincere. And uh, that's what we want to be about this morning. Uh, but we also want to encourage you that if you're home this morning. Uh, that, that, that we love you, uh, we miss you, and uh, we know there's a lot of different uh, thinking and reasoning that goes into uh, whether you're home or whether you're here, and we just want to know that where you, wherever you end up on that, we, we want to honor that and respect that, but uh, man, it's going to be so great uh, to have everybody back in the building, and it feels like uh, maybe that time uh, is, is coming uh, sooner rather than later i don't know it, it it looks uh it looks promising it looks like there's some good news on that front so uh just want to encourage you guys this morning that as you're worshiping that you're locked in that this is time between you and god and for you and your family with him and that you're reading along with us that you're taking notes and that you're uh, singing from the heart and that you're really praying uh with us and so uh, that we have that unity of purpose amongst believers this morning. And uh, and once again, just to remind you, if uh, you have a tithe or an offering uh, that you want to give, uh, you can mail that into the church, you can give online. Uh, all of those are viable options at this point. We just want to thank you once again that even though uh, we haven't been in the building, that you're still continuing uh, to support the church and the ministry that we're doing. So can't thank you guys enough for that. And uh, continue to pray. 
uh, for this ministry and for what we're doing, uh, that God's word uh, would uh, enter into hearts and lives and homes uh, that maybe uh, our ministry hasn't been able to get into yet, and that uh, a positive life change and transformation will take place because of it. Uh, so here we go this morning. I just want to pray for us and uh, dedicate this time to the Lord this morning. So pray with me, if you will. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time together, Lord. I pray uh, that you'd be with us, that you'd be present amongst us, God, and that in all that we do, all that we say, that it would glorify you and what you've done through your son, Jesus, and uh, that we would draw closer to you, that we would understand more fully uh, your plans and purposes for us, that we would uh, get to know you uh, that much better and know your desires and your character, God, and the goodness uh, that you are, uh, that it would grow our affection for you and our love for you, Father, that we would have true joy, true peace in the midst of all of this uh, that is going on in life right now, um, that we would find uh, hope in you. So God, just uh, speak to us this morning. We pray this time is yours. Do with it and do with us what you would will. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. Thanks for joining in.
we're what you would call cord cutters at our house, meaning we haven't had a cable uh, TV subscription for a lot of years now. And it works out pretty well for us. We have an antenna that sort of works. Uh, we get a few uh, PBS stations, but we don't really uh, check in on that a whole lot. What we normally do is every football season, we'll upgrade our streaming service to a live uh, TV uh, streaming service and that works out pretty well because then every fall every football season I get to watch uh, the Huskers play and uh, this year uh, got into uh, another team I've always kind of had a few teams in the NFL that I follow but I've never really had my team you know like I always like kind of watching Kansas City play I liked watching the Packers play uh, when we lived in Washington State the Seahawks um, you know, I never really had my team though, but Mason this year, he was all in on the Kansas City Chiefs and, uh, man, I really enjoyed watching the Kansas City Chiefs. And so I kind of jumped in with him and you can call me a bandwagon fan. That's fine. Uh, I just got really, really tired of, uh, not, uh, you know, it'd been a while since I'd seen what winning football uh, looks like. I hope that changes this next fall uh, for the Huskers if we have football. Um, but I just so enjoyed watching the Kansas City Chiefs with my son. And we were watching a playoff game this last winter. And Mason, you know, he he was right there with me. The, the Chiefs were often playing from the behind uh, in the playoffs. And you can never count them out because their offense is just such a high uh, powered offense. And and they're playing from behind and they're starting to make this this furious comeback where, man, big play after big play after big play. And I remember Mason, he's like, Dad, pause it. I got to go to the bathroom. And I just looked at him like, I can't pause this. I mean, I could. I mean, we have technology where you can pause this. But with, but with like sporting events, like I don't ever want to watch it like 10 minutes behind everybody else, especially a team that I'm really interested in. And, and especially during the playoffs, like I'm not going to pause this. And I realized that my son, uh, his childhood is very different than the childhood I had. Where on Saturday morning, if your favorite cartoon or favorite show was on during that commercial break, you did anything and everything you needed to do within that commercial break. You would run to the bathroom and then go to the kitchen after washing your hands. You'd go to the kitchen and you would make a bowl of cereal. And the minute someone yells, it's on, you were hauling back into the living room, uh, diving over the couch and, and back in locked into your show. And so when Mason said, just pause it, I was like, I can't pause this. This is, this is real life. This is live. This is happening now. I can't pause this. I don't want to pause this. This is real life. I don't want to miss a single thing. We're in the book of Psalms, and Psalm 90 is the kickoff of what is considered to be book four of the five books that we find uh, within the book of Psalms. And uh, basically what's come before is we see David being propped up as a model of, of what faithfulness looks like to be a man after God's own heart. And then we have uh, God's promises to his people, the promise of a temple where they will be able to worship him. And then also a king, a divine king that will be sent by God uh, to rule over his people. And now here as we get into uh, book four, we, we, we basically are, are, are being encouraged uh, through the words of Moses and the other uh, writers of Psalms of, of what to do here now. And for the people that received this for the very first time, these were God's people in exile, okay? So they had been taken from their home. They're in exile. And, and the next uh, section of Psalms for them is what to do here and now with the time that you're given in exile. And so what I really want to do is I want to uh, read this for us this morning. I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then we're going to read this together. So let's pray that God's word would speak to us in spirit, in truth, and in power this morning. Heavenly Father, God, we ask that your word would speak to us, that we would have uh, an open heart that would be willing uh, to be challenged by you, to be convicted by you, to be uh, broken by you if it needs to be, God. Uh, that uh, we would have ears that are willing to hear and to listen, that our minds would uh, long for understanding and for wisdom, and that our uh, souls 
uh, that we would be ready to follow you, God, wherever you call us to, and uh, to, to give up whatever needs to be given up, uh, to pursue whatever needs to be pursued, uh, and that in all things, God, that, that we would give you uh, honor through our lives and through our obedience uh, here this morning. So just challenge us, uh, we pray this morning, God. Uh, thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. We pray all this thing, all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so let's read this together. Psalm uh, 90. And this is a psalm of Moses. So it takes us all the way back to, to Moses uh, uh, here in this next section of Psalms. Uh, verse 1 says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth, and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You return man to dust and say, return, O children of man, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. You sweep them away as with a flood, like they are a dream. Like grass, it is renewed in the morning. In the morning, it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening, it fades and withers, for we are brought to an end by your anger. By your wrath we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to you to, to you we bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are seventy, or even by reason of strength eighty, yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be shown to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. I want to ask you a question. How long have you been here? You might be thinking, oh, gee, preacher, I don't know how long we've been here, but I sure hope you're wanting to wrap it up soon. I don't know who that's supposed to be. That doesn't sound like anybody I know in Nebraska. That sounds like somebody trying to do a bad impression of somebody in Nebraska, but... It's beside the point, but that's not, that's not the question that I'm asking. How long I'm preaching? How long have you been here? How long have you been sitting there listening to me? It's not what I'm asking. I'm asking the question, how long have you been here? In comparison to God, what this psalm teaches us, you, you look at uh, Psalm 90 and Moses says, God, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Uh, before the mountains were brought forth or ever had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. This psalm reminds us how big, how powerful, how strong God is. And so many times, you know, we, we tend to kind of put God in this box or we want to put God in this box. We want to understand who God is. We want to know his plans for us and, 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 and have all of the answers to our questions. But God is just so vast. We, we can't put him in the box. And Psalm 90 requires us to take God out of the box that we've put him in to see him rightly and to understand correctly that, that, that he is a God that is outside of time. He is a God that is outside of time. He, he is a God that is not bound by our seconds, by our minutes, by our days. It goes on to say that, that uh, a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, or a watch in the night. So let me ask you the question, how long have you been here? If you could put a number to it, and you can, I'm going to put a, a website up on the screen and, and you can pause the video because uh, th this is the beauty of, of doing church online is you can pause this and, and check this out. We're going to take a moment to pause here in the church sanctuary to do this together. Uh, but there is a website that I'm going to put up and it's, it's a blog uh, from a guy named uh, Rod Martin. And it's a very clever name for a website. It's imrodmartin.com backslash my slash days. 
Okay, it's right up there on the screen for you. And what you can do is when you go onto this website, there is a calculator that you, when you punch your birthday in, it will tell you how many days you have been here on this earth. And for me, when I punched in my birthday, April 24th, uh, it says that I have been here on this earth 13,558 days. 13,558 days. And when I reach 20,000 days, it will be on January 28th, 1938. I'll be 55. And that feels like a long ways away. And I feel like 55 is still pretty young. Uh, so for those of you that are in your 50s, good job on still being pretty young in my, <laughs> in my book. But uh, by the time I hit 30,000 days, and I hope I hit 30,000 days, uh, it'll be on June 12th, uh, nine, not 19, 2065. I'm going to be one of those people that at that time, they're going to be like, what was it like before the turn of the century? And uh, kids are going to be just dumbfounded that we used to call each other on the telephone and not see each other face to face or through holograms or whatever stuff they have in 2065. But I'll be 82 then when I've hit 30,000 days, I'll be 82. And so I've, 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 I've accrued a, a, a pretty significant portion of time here on the earth, and I'm thankful for what I've been given. But if you put it in the context of God, a thousand years being like one day to us, think about it. If a thousand years is like a day in his sight, well, then that means that 80 years for us, it's like two hours to God. 80 years, it's like two hours to God. And then if you had take into context what it says at the end of verse four, that, or it's like a watch in the night, a watch in the night typically lasted like three hours, three or four hours, because they would take the watch in shifts, right? So, so if you think that a watch is three hours to God, 80 years, it's like 15 minutes, 15 minutes. For our 80 years. And now that's not some concrete number that you can set your watch by it. Uh, obviously, God is a God who is outside of time, but it's just to give us some perspective on how limited our time is here on the earth. And for us, our days, they go by so fast in the context of eternity. And, and for us and for the people that are receiving this under exile, for us going through difficult circumstances in our life, because, I mean, the, the days they come and go, you know, when you're, when you're holding a brand new baby, people say, enjoy it because it goes by so fast. And it's true. Or when you have a, a wedding anniversary and, and, and people look back and they say, man, where, where have 17 years gone? My wife and I will be celebrating our anniversary later this summer. And, and every day has been a gift. And, it, and it's like crazy to me to think about that we've been together for that long, that many years. And, and for my wife, you know, she says, I'm approaching the time where eventually we're going to be past the time of, of where, where I've spent more time with you doing life than I did with my family, with my parents. That's crazy to think about. But our time goes so fast, and, and man, the good times, they just they fly by, right? But when it's difficult, when it's hard, when we're in exile, or when we're in the midst of difficult circumstances, we're asking God, how long? Those days seem like forever, right? Some days are definitely longer than others. And we wonder, how long is this going to last? Or even if life is good, we, we think about how, how many days do I have left? You see, for God, who is outside of time, he's using this to give us some humility, to give us some perspective, and to teach us to number our days. That's what verse 12 says. It says, God, teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days. It's not enough for us to just number our days. We've already done that. The reality of our situation is that the fallout of sin in our life 
means that we're here one minute and we're gone the next, that death is the reality that faces each and every one of us. And so while we're here one minute and gone the next, we don't know how many days we've actually been given. We don't know how many more we have left. Verse 12 says that we need to allow God to teach us, that God is here with us and he has something to teach us. Did, did you hear that? that? That for those that are in exile, for those that are wondering how long, God, how long will you leave us here in this place as if we've been abandoned? How long? God is still with them. God wants to teach them their in that place, in that situation, in those moments. And for us, no matter what we face, whether life is good and, and, and man, the days go by so fast and we're just so blessed, or whether life is, is a struggle, God is with us. And, and he wants to teach us to value our days and to use them rightly for his purposes, not our own, for his kingdom. You see, God in this moment, he has some things that he wants to teach us. Uh, throughout all of this, it's been a, a struggle for me as I read articles about what's happening uh, in the church and in churches uh, uh, around the country, around the globe, and how they're carry on, carrying on with ministry. It's almost as if it feels like we've been on hiatus a little bit. And yes, we talked about how the church isn't just a building, how, you know, the church is out there. But I worry about the mission. I worry that as things have kind of been at a pause for us as an organization, I worry that the mission has suffered because we haven't valued our days and we haven't allowed God to teach us how to use our time wisely for his kingdom that we've been wrapped up in so many other things that we've lost sight of the true mission that he's called us to. I worry about that. And so I pray that, that when we're outside of these doors, and I pray that when we're inside these doors and, and going forward as a church, that God would teach us to number our days, to know our limitations, and so that we would take advantage of every opportunity to live the gospel, to share the gospel, to help people know who Jesus is. And for you that 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 are are home with your families, and and for us, you know, if if we're you know working from home or whatever it is, like we've had a tremendous opportunity as things have been removed from our calendar and things have been removed from our schedule, to reinvest in relationships that are so important. That are so important. And so I got to ask you, have you used this time? And if I can encourage you, please use this time to reconnect with your spouse, to fight for your marriage, to, to, to open God's word, to pray together, to, to, to communicate well, to not hold grudges, to, to not hang on to bitterness, but to forgive as you've been forgiven to reconcile those areas that you felt at odds. And for parents, like, like I said, as, as some of that busyness has been taken off of our plate and we're trying to find ways to keep our kids busy, as pastors, I've been talking with Chad, we've, we've been talking, and, and man, what a gift that we've been given. And we're, we're starting to see this now, that it's not up to us to teach your kids about Jesus. I mean, we, we love doing that. Don't get us wrong. But it's your responsibility to be the primary teachers of, of, of God's word in your home. And, and, if, and if anything should ever happen, if there's a second wave where, of this virus in the fall where we can't meet once again, what will happen then? The studies are showing us that people are checking out in various ways of, of church and ministry. And I, and I don't think that's happening uh, in a large extent here. But I know that, that the studies indicate that the ministry that happens in the church, it's not being replicated at home. And so we have failed you because we haven't equipped you. We haven't given you the tools necessary to be in God's word, to, 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 to study it for yourself, 
to, 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 to be stronger in your marriage, to be stronger in the discipleship of your children. And we're going to have some, some resources. I'm not going to leave you without uh, any kind of tools here this morning, but, but, but in a sermon about time, I don't want to take up a bunch of your time this morning. I want to give you some of this time back to just be with your family, to be present, to talk about important things. Because God is with you in this moment and he wants to teach you to value the days that you've been given. And I hope that that, that means for us, as it goes on, that in verse 13, that we would have a heart that be all about wanting God's return. May your kingdom come, God. That was what Jesus taught us to pray. May your kingdom come. May your will be done. So when it says in verse 13, return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Man, there are things going on in our world today, and I'm looking around and I'm saying, how long, God? Return. And whether he does that through his son, or maybe it's the kick <laughs> that we need as the church, to go out and be the change that needs to take place? I don't know. But, but in the meantime, until Jesus comes back, we need to be at the forefront of, of, of loving our neighbors, uniting families, making disciples. That's what we need to be about. That's the mission that he's called us to. And so we say, return, O Lord. And then verse 14, satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. When we seek God's kingdom first, he satisfies us in a way like no other. You may come to the end of your life and be filled with regret at all the things that you didn't get done. Or you may accomplish all the things that you ever wanted to do and you'll still be left unsatisfied, feeling like it's not enough. Oh, if only I had more time. But when we pursue God, he satisfies us in a way like no one else and no thing can. Verse 16 says, let your work be shown to your servants and your glorious power to their children. God, show us what you've done. Let us have thanksgiving and rejoicing for all of the things that you've done for us. And then when it says, establish the work of our hands in verse 17, let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. I think that means that when we pursue God, the work that we'll be about will be of his design, of his planning of his blessing, and that he'll establish it. And he'll go before us and he will prepare the hearts and minds of those that we will be striving to connect with, to influence, to serve, to love. And that he'll be going before us and that we'll see a harvest that we weren't working for, that we didn't see, that we didn't know of, that was unexpected because he has gone before us and established it for us. There was a, a guy by the name of uh, Jim Croce and, uh, you know, Bad, Bad Leroy Brown. Um, that's not the song I'm, I'm referencing here this morning to close. Uh, but he sang a song, and uh, what's interesting is it became famous after Jim Croce died in a plane crash. At the age of 30, Jim Croce died in a plane crash, and this song became a hit number one after uh, he passed away, and it was called uh, Time in a Bottle. And it was a song that he wrote, and I'm going to read you just a few lines. And this is a song that he wrote because he, he knew that the time that he had with his son was was fleeting. And boy, did he, he, he didn't really understand how true that was uh, as he was uh, dead and gone by the age of 30. But this is what the song says. It says, The first thing that I'd like to do is to save every day till eternity passes away just to spend them with you. There never seems to be enough time to do the things you want to do once you find them. God, teach us to number our days. Teach us to value the things that you value so that we can rightly work towards the goals and the missions that you have just just outside of our reach. If we pur pur pursue them with faithfulness, with full trust that you've gone before us, 
that you're wanting to establish the work, the ministry that you've called us to. Man, what a beautiful thing that would be. And what a beautiful thing it would be if you took this opportunity, instead of wondering how long until we get back in church, how long until we get back to normal and we can send our kids to church camp and VBS or, or, or Kingdom Kids, maybe just stop and take a minute that, that, that maybe God's given you an opportunity to really take the lead in your home. To, to, to read the word for yourself and to, to be the ones that, that disciple your own kids. Pray for your grown children. To reconnect with, with people that, that maybe you've lost touch with. Maybe God's using this time, maybe he wants to use this time and to teach you how to be a better husband or a better wife. Whether the days are going fast because they've been so good or whether the days seem to drag on for, forever because life is just so tough. God is still with you. God is in the midst of this with you. He wants to teach you. And he cares about you. And this time will pass. And eternity is always just outside of our reach. And one day we will die and we will pass on into eternity. And then then we'll stand before God and he'll want to know what we, what we did with the time that we were given. Will we stand before him and say, God, I got distracted because I was, I was so busy building a home for myself that I lost sight of the kingdom and the home that you were building for me and the people that you wanted me to bring with me? I don't know. God, teach us to number our days. Teach us to value the time that we've been given. It goes so fast. This is real life. And I don't want to miss it. And I hope you don't either. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for this time together, God. Teach us to number our days rightly. Like break down the pride that we have. Uh, man, just destroy and demolish everything that would distract us from following you that would keep us from pursuing your kingdom first and foremost and not just for ourselves man we get so wrapped up in just like the knowledge and the the worship and man all that's good stuff but this was never meant to be kept to ourselves yes we're called to grow in you and to grow in our faithfulness but man it's not meant for us to hang on to. It's meant for us to give away. And when we've learned, God, to, to, to number our days rightly, we will give it away. And we'll, we'll value the relationships that we have around us. And we'll, we'll do the hard work of, of, of trying to show them your love and, and to love them and to serve them. God, man, I just thank you so much um, for this time. I just pray that you use it. <sighs> Keep teaching me, God. Keep teaching us all. In Jesus' name, amen. As we enter into our time of communion, I just want to give you a heads up and a, a few moments to grab uh, whatever you'll be uh, taking communion with this morning. Uh, but I wanted to highlight something for you that I thought uh, was interesting or uh, important for, for what we're talking about here this morning. Uh, during this whole uh, lockdown, isolation, quarantine, whatever you want to call it, uh, there was uh, something that happened that was, I feel, pretty noteworthy. Um, an actor by the name of John Krasinski, uh, he's famous for uh, playing Jim Halpert on The Office, uh, a TV show on NBC uh, that was uh, a phenomenon. You know, it was a, a cultural a touchstone for a lot of people. And uh, John Krasinski has gone on to become a very likable uh, uh, movie star. Um, he's done a lot of different work as an actor. And uh, and he was just kind of fed up with all of the, the difficult uh, things that he was seeing going on in the world, all the bad news that was uh, being shown through uh, news outlets and the media. And he started a little uh, web show on YouTube called Some Good News. Uh, it was dubbed the SGN Network, and uh, basically he accumulated uh, clips, stories, uh, did some really interesting uh, fan interaction things that uh, a lot of people, it, it resonated with a lot of people, that people were just hungry for good news, and 
Um, what's crazy is he, he started this and after the first episode was launched on YouTube, uh, overnight the channel had over 330,000 subscribers, just overnight. And in one day, um, the first video had 3.1 million views in one day. Um, and, and some of those uh, uh, installments of, of some good news that he had put out uh, put uh, up numbers that were over 17 million views on YouTube. It's just uh, astounding. In fact, uh, media outlets uh, were in a bidding war to try and buy out uh, this, this idea that John had kind of put together uh, during uh, quarantine at home. Uh, you can tell he's using uh, probably his his phone to videotape things and and, uh, and it was just interesting to see people hungering, yearning for for something good to to hold on to. And, and it brings us to our text this morning, and it comes from Isaiah 52. I, I quote Isaiah earlier uh, in our sermon, but uh, I want to come back to the prophet Isaiah because it, it has a lot to do with uh, those that were receiving the Psalms. Uh, being taught by the Psalms. These were people that were in exile. And the prophet Isaiah, uh, he speaks to God's people in exile. For thus says the Lord, you were sold for nothing and you shall be redeemed without money. For thus says the Lord, my people went down at first into Egypt to sojourn there and the Assyrian oppressed them for nothing. Now, therefore, what have I here, declares the Lord, seeing that my people are taken away for nothing their rulers wail, declares the Lord, and continually all the day my name is despised. Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore in that day they shall know that it is I who speak. Here I am. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy. For eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our Lord. Basically, what God is telling us is that it's by his hand and only his hand that we are redeemed. And his redemption is something that is good news. It's, it's worth celebrating. And for us who are his people, it's something we should value above all other things to the point that we are willing to, to take it to other people. How beautiful are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings news of happiness. Our world is hungry for good news, and we have found good news of salvation, redemption, and new life through Jesus. So let's take it everywhere we go. Let's carry this good news inside of us as we live and move and breathe. May people know Jesus because they have seen him in us. And as we take communion this morning, we remember the redemption that was uh, bought and paid for through the broken body and the blood of Jesus Christ. And so we take of these elements, symbols of the sacrifice that was made for us, that we could be bearers of this good news in our body, in our life, and that all that we are would be a testimony to the love and goodness and mercy of God. So take and eat and remember Jesus who died for you. Heavenly Father, you are good news. And Lord, we thank you so much for sending your son to die for us. Um, it is only by your hand that we are redeemed. We couldn't save ourselves. Uh, we couldn't live a perfect life. Uh, only he could do that for us. And God, Thank you uh, so much, Jesus, that you were willing to uh, come and, and live that perfect life, to lay down your life so that we might be forgiven, that we might be brought close um, to God, that your Holy Spirit would, would dwell inside of us. Uh, we, we can't thank you enough for all that you're doing and, and do already for us. And, 
I pray, God, that, that, that we would prove our love, that we would show uh, a deepening faith, uh, that, that, that as we experience you, that, that we would live in such a way that people might experience you as well because they, they see you uh, in our lives and through our lives. So, God, I just pray uh, and thank you for uh, this sacrifice that was made for me, that was made for us all. And, and I thank you for the good news that it is uh, for my life. And, and I pray, God, that we'd be your people, a people that would be bearers of your good news, of your son. We pray these things in his name. Amen. So that wraps things up for us here this morning. Uh, once again, uh, we miss you guys. Uh, I can't wait until we're all here uh, once again worshiping uh, together. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful thing. And, and I'm just, I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to, to, to log on to join us uh, through worship in this way. It really means a lot because it, it does take a, a tremendous amount of effort to, to do this, not once, but, but twice and to get it all uh, piece together. And so I just uh, want to thank you for, for taking time to, to spend it with us and to spend it with the Lord. 
So uh, this week, I pray uh, that the time that you've been given would be such a tremendous blessing that you wouldn't take it for granted and that the opportunities and the moments that you have, uh, whether it's with your family, whether it's with your coworkers, whether it's your neighbor next door, that you wouldn't take those moments for granted and that you would be the bearer of God's good news through his son, Jesus, uh, and that you would know that your, yes, your days are numbered, but that you would number them rightly living for his kingdom and for his glory. So I hope that God goes with you. I know he goes with you. Trust in that. Uh, I can't wait to see you guys. We love you. We mean it. And we'll see you later. Bye.